Um, I'd like to introduce um, uh, Mr. Tingwang Ma from Oklahoma State, uh, Department of Fire Protection and Safety Technology. He's speaking a bit today on the utility of a paddock model on simulating crowd disasters. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and today's topic is uh, a panic model. And this panic model is a lot of debate because you can find many definitions of panic in the literature. And here we'll try to use a new definition and try to tailor it as, as, a, as a, a criteria to switch between the normal behavior and the emergency behavior. And this emergent behavior may cause the crowd disaster. So this is a convenience or uh, you can, we can find some utility for this in the simulation crowd disaster. And we will review some de definitions and the panic growth model is the main topic. topic. And then we will review some uh, campus stampede in China. We can find 49 uh, uh, campus stampedes that are dealing with a unique population and uh, in a certain time. And uh, then we will discuss a little bit about uh, how to use this model in the crowd simulation and crowd control. And here the typical case in China in 70 years ago. And uh, you can find here this stampede. And this stampede, these are corpse, these are body, the body in a theater fire. And uh, 323 people died in, this ca in that case. And you can find, sorry. And the stampede here, here, and here is reasonable because it's a door it's a bottleneck, so the, the people crash and jam and uh, cause a stampede there. The, the unique thing about this stampede is a lot of people stampede in the center. There is no obstacles. It's a normal space. And why the people stampede there and cause the major trouble? And we can look at the conditions as environmental condition, about the door condition, and about illumination condition, and about population profile. From all these factors, we can understand there is some strange behavior related to panic. And that's the purpose uh, we uh, start the panic study. We will go, to, go back to this uh, um, problem later. And here, panic is a definition with a new definition with disorganization due to fear. So this is a non-traditional one. And we can find a similar one. It's called uh, the crowd in dissolution. So basically, we focused on the the outlook. So it's not the subjective emotion, just to look at the people, they're just in a, in a disorganization, a disorder stage or chaotic stage, then we think, believe it's a panic and that's caused some trouble. And we can infer the panic state from the result of a disaster. Either people stamp it, stamp it, or crushing here, or drowning, they jump into the water. This is the Iraqi stampede, so in the, in the 2006. And they, they, a lot of people jump into the water, cause the trouble. And here is a suffocation in the fire, suffocation, and also jumping. It's a, it's a, it's both, all these cases are injudicious decision making under decision, under emergency, and we believe it's a panic situation. And before we go to the panic, we need to understand there are several panic. One is escape panic. Escape panic just rush away from the primary danger. And here is acquisitive panic because you have some bait or some kind of free gift. A lot of people rush and they, they, have, they, have, they cannot show any movements, but from the, from the emotions you can feel, they have some panic inside and you can measure it by the forces. So if you measure the forces in, the, in this uh, structure, you can infer the panic level inside. And the last one is uh, uh, aggressive. Aggressive means a lot of people in flow. And uh, you can find uh, hundreds, thousands, or millions of people. The, the crowd itself is an uh, environment. For the people live in this, uh, in this team, in this crowd, they feel the pressure of, of nearby bodies. And this sometimes causes trouble if not managed properly. So that uh, is a typical case in the Duisburg stampede. And the last one is the negative panic or frozen in place. That means they do nothing at all. They just receive too much information and cause uh, no movement. And this 
is not uh, good or bad, it's a neutral, but these three cause some trouble and these three we have to focus in the, in the crowd simulation. And the symptoms of panic, we can find several symptoms such as move faster and the body contact and also with some jamming at the bottleneck. So these are common, definite, common symptoms and we can infer there is some panic because it's not normal flow. It's already piled up and this causes some, some trouble and it's a state of panic, it's in the middle, in the earlier stage and we can find some other symptoms such as arching, clogging, jams or the forces. The forces can be very high. The force can be very high. And uh, the, these uh, school kids push the fence to the other side, that means the, the, the internal forces are very strong. And also can be fall, falling injury and also the hurting behavior. Hurting behavior means they cannot uh, have time, no time to notice the other behavior the other exits, they're just using one exit preferably to other one and this is not uh, happen under optimistic condition or normal evacuation condition. They only un happening under emergency and this is, uh, we, we believe is the uh, result of panic behavior. And then we can find this panic model. So basically panic model is six elements and why not five, why not seven, because six is the most uh, uh, memorable. So you can find a lot of uh, items, they, they, can, they cannot list everything, so they're just using six. And here we find the first is the environment, that means hardware condition, illumination condition, so it's uh, even the crowd is a kind of environment. The crowd, they do not have some hardware nearby, but they have the body nearby and the, 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 the people nearby is an environment to them. And the next is the patron. You can find several crowd or several population are more panic prone than others. For example, the Italian hot disaster was happened in, uh, in, uh, among the people of miners. So the miners are very sensitive to fire. So if you shout out fire, no matter it's true or false, the response from the miner are more secure or more extreme than others. Why? Because they are, they are educated to, to response to fire. So if you have look at the population, you can find several population are more panic prone, such as the school kids. They have no experience, they respond much violent than others. Next is a triggering, a triggering event. And you can find uh, uh, this triggering event may be small, maybe just a falling, maybe very large, such as earthquake, but it causes some kind of individual panic. That means they move faster, they try to get away from the primary danger. So that's good because in a fire scenario, you want people to evacuate faster. If, you, if they do not have insufficient clues to the fire, they may just uh, leisurely, they work out leisurely, they do not uh, um, follow, they do not hurry enough and cause some delay. But if they have a continual event such as an enforcing event and without external control and this time is another issue. If you have a too long a time, then the crowd of the people will calm down. So you arouse the people to individual panic, they may calm down and slow down. But if you have another enforcing event within a short time and have no time for them to respond, then they may grow into mass panic. And this mass panic causes a disaster. Remember, it's not a panic causes a disaster, it's a panic through the decision-making process lets the people make a wrong decision and cause the disaster. So the panic is like a catalytic effect. They do not cause directly, they cause by some other environmental population and the combination of all together and the, 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 the panic will catalytic, the, catalytic them into a, a disaster. And we can find that this is a typical individual panic because the, the collapse uh, is one, moment, one event and after that there is no additional fourth event so they just go, get away and no stampede because there is no enforcing event. But if you have some other enforcing event 
then there is some continuous stampede and cause the more fatalities involved. And next, we will look at the panic growth curve. We can using the panic at the level of disorganization in the crowd, so you can monitor it, measure it, and here we compare it to the fire growth in a compartment. Here we have a fully burning and ventilation limited. We have a fully free burning, fully burning, and suppressing time, and have ignition, flashover, extinction. Now we look at the panic. We can find the trigger event can cause individual panic, which is very slow. So every uh, people behave reasonably, and uh, this is the triggering time. But once the fire, re the, the panic level reach a steep growing process and cause the mass panic, then the panic will reach a plateau. The, 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 I try to have similar. A similar plateau as here because the population is the same. The, the, the energy level cannot go beyond the population. So the, the, all these people, they can exert the maximum energy. This maximum energy uh, exerted, once exerted, that means the panic level is maximum. And once you have external control, you just control the force, you control the crowd so the panic level can die down. So that depends when and how you exert external control. So basically using the panic growth model, we can compare with the fire growth model. And so we can have a level about, have a sense of the situation in the crowd. So if you can take actions, try to predict the, the stampedes to happen, or control the panic from the more fatalities, then you can use this concept to, to do the prediction and uh, control. And uh, there are two cases uh, unique about the panic is, so for Barry Hill's Super Club file, it's very famous. They said there is no panic. Everybody get out very regular. So you can find out a lot of literature point to this fact. But the problem with the Barry Hill's file is there is no mass, mass notification devices in the, in the total building. So the initial alarm or initial clue is very unclear. So the population inside this cabaret room is not a fully notification, so they have a very low panic level. But once the panic level reached, reached the mass panic level, they have a competitive flight, and almost 97% of people piled up near the two exits and that's the typical symptom of the mass panic. So we still believe it has mass panic involved, but in a later stage. So in the early stage, everybody just leave regularly, and they have no, no strong symptom of panic. But once in the later stage, once the smoke billow into the room, they have, they, then everybody uh, try to get out, get out uh, uh, as quickly as possible then the jam and the rush and crash and stampede uh, occurred near the two exits. So that's the uh, a, a variation of panic, panic curve. Here is another case you can find in China. There is a dancing club fire. And you can find the panic is involved too early. The reason for that is it's a club fire. So a lot of people drink a lot of alcohol. So the decision making process under influence of alcohol is very strange. So they rushed to get out and rushed, and it's too early. So the panic level rushed too early. So basically, this caused them more uh, deaths than the smoke and the fire. So basically, the fire started in the center and controlled by sprinkler. So the fire never goes out of control, and the stampede at this exit caused 44 people died. Stampede and smoke inhalation. And this is a pure, it's a, it's a pure symptom of the early development of panic level inside this room. So that's, a, a two, a, that's two, two extremes of the panic growth. And nothing is new under the sun. We can find this model. The panic growth model is comparable with it smells as a value added theory, so basically the panic is not stagnant. It will grow depend on, the, depend on some other conditions, so that the level is not just one phenomenon, it's just a growing concept. 
And also, we, it's uh, similar to the Freud's uh, crowd disaster theory. He identified four factors. So we try to use in the uh, six elements to characterize the process. So now we look at some other uh, st examples in China. You can find uh, you can find uh, uh, 49 uh, campus stampedes in China in different area. So most uh, happened in the central area, and this central area you can find is because they have a strong uh, temperature change in the year. So the very strong the four season is very significant. So the the, the, if you add more clothes, you have more body resistance. And the body resistance is a major contributor to the panic situation in the crowd. And that's the symptoms. And here is the environmental factor. If you look at the panic related to disaster, you always find the structure conductiveness or the, 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 the limitation or defect, uh, defect uh, stairs. Uh, the illumination condition, you always find the environmental is not good. Next is the victim profile. So most of the victims are seven years old or 11, 13 years old. So seven years old is the early age of the elementary school, and uh, uh, 13 or 14 is the, 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 the early years of middle school. So basically their age, their age is very important to initiate this disaster. And we can find the cause of stampede with merging, surging, herding, earthquake, rumor. So herding means unevenly use of exits. So the egress capacity is not fully used. But for other cases, merging and surging, that happened every day. And that's, uh, <coughs> that's a very common causes you can find uh, some uh, percentage. So surgeon means they start get out at the same time. And so in China, it's very common to, to, for everybody to uh, leave school at the same time, and that's cost uh, more than 50%. For other cases, you can also find uh, uh, some percentage. And uh, the main diagram I want to show is here. So major campus stampede in the, in, happened in the fall, preferably in the November. The reason for that is the body resistance. So once you add more clothes, but your moving behavior do not change, then that's the leading cause of stampede. Because your body resistance is changed, but your moving habit is not changed. So once you have fully closed in December and January, there is less stampede. But only stampede were during the transition stage. So when you change more clothes, you have more chances to get stampedes. And this is a time factor. So even though the, in the night, stampede happened in the night, it's only a quarter of all disaster, but majority fatalities happened in the night because of response time. In the night, you cannot rescue them in the sufficient uh, speed, and that's caused the trouble. And here we'll get, go back to the theater stampede. So if you're using the six, seven element, six elements, we can find the reason for the stampede is a partial loss of exist and loss of power, so the dark inside, and unsuitable ch children-teacher ratio, so the teachers cannot calm them down, calm the school children down. So they just get to run errand, and the ratio is 16. So that means the teacher cannot uh, manage 16 people in a, in a short time. And the uh, uh, initiation, because they have some explosion, a backdraft, and uh, they, it's very strange to them, so that causes a mass panic. And uh, as the mass spread is a enforcing event, missing, ex missing external control, and uh, more than 10 minutes of stampede. So here, the fire major is in the front, and here the stampede happened here, but the fire is small there. So it's, it's not very huge there, so the fire is small in this area, but uh, it, the most people trapped there because of stampede. And that's related to the panic situation, which is uh, due to the six elements. And the result of the panic is 
the once the in mass panic, they tend to uh, towards the mass behavior. That means they exert forces, cancel each other. There is no forces, they cannot move. And that's the panic algorithm already implemented in the FDS, evacuations, FDS evac. And uh, so the question is how to, if you want to simulate the crowd disaster and when to release external help, uh, and uh, how to estimate life losses in a stampede, that's depend on experience. There is no systematic study, but with the panic model, you have a capability to do that. And for real-time diagnosis, for the uh, acquisitive panic, you measure the forces. For the egress panic, you measure the lo and noise. So everybody shouts, that's the noise. And for the uh, aggressive panic, then you measure the body sway. The recently, there is a new software in Germany that they, they, they uh, image processing the uh, people movement, and they find before the stampede, the crowd showing the rhythmic swing because the people in the crowd cannot control their movement easily. So once they lose their control, they follow the crowd and they showed some disorganization and that's the crowd panic, mass panic. And why panic is real? We have several reasons. You can read the paper. And basically panic is a philosophy. So order or disorder is a matter of organization. So if you control it, then you can avoid the panic. If you lose control, then you have panic level grows very high and cause the disaster. And here we just have several topics. Once the panic is a new definition, and we try to use a panic as a, a gauge or index to simulate the crowd situation, and then non, non normal or emergency behavior comes in, and then you can simulate crowd disaster. That's all. Any questions? Thank you. We have, we don't have much time, but one question if anybody has something. Steve? Sir. I'm not going to argue with Sun Tzu, but um, they, they, they seem, you seem to be using the word panic in two entirely different ways here. One is to describe individual motivation, and then the other is to describe the, a crowd condition. And, and I, I noticed in your graphs, on the left-hand axis, you had, um, maybe you can go back to it, it was like panic level. And I think a key issue here is, and the, the danger with the term panic is, what does it mean? What, what, how do you characterize that panic level? And in terms of stampede, it may be, for instance, or, or crush, it could be the, cr the, 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 the crowd density that you're measuring as, as a measurement of trouble into which people are, are being exposed. Or it could be, for instance, the difference between the individual's objectives and their ability to reach that objective. So for instance, where you've got individual panic there, actually what you're saying is people are just responding in different ways. There's not a unified response, or the conditions are not uniform. And then when you've got in the center stampede, well, what that probably means is people are responding in a more unified, unified way as the conditions become clearer, and then they're, not un, they're, not, they're unable to resolve the situation. They're not able to reach their objectives. So that, then you get a sort of a feedback loop where people are stuck in a situation, they're exposed to dangerous conditions, and they're unable to get out of it. And then those conditions are alleviated by something. So, so people are able to resolve the situation, the congestion, the congestion reduces. So, so my, my, my issue here would be, panic. how do you measure panic level? It's actually a very specific thing you're talking about, which is the conditions and the dangers that are being ex people are being exposed to. And so the, the term panic level itself may... I guess you're, you're using the word as an individual motivation, and then it is a, 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 a level of, of congestion or a level of condition to a crowd. Yep. And those are two entirely different things. Yep. So I would just say use a different term, because may, maybe these curves are useful, but it, you just need to characterize what you're saying on that axis yep. more clearly yep. uh, than the, and not confuse the two, two uses. It's true. And uh, I have uh, three, pan three types of panic. The panic level should be defined individually for each situation. And basically, the introduction of this panic is we try to differentiate the, if you have a, if you have the very low panic level, then the human behavior come into play. Once you do not know whether the, 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 in danger, the danger is real or not real, then you have uh, uh, search clues, some other human behavior, 
but once you know in the middle you have you know there is some uh, panic then you started to move then you began to harmonize your response begins to harmonize because you know clearly there is some uh, danger involved and once you have uh, uh, the, the panic level is too high then everybody try to do the same thing the mass behavior then they cancel each other so there is no movement at, at all so basically using the panic we can differentiate three, three types of condition and switch from normal to emergency and that's the purpose thank you very much thanks